Hey, what's up, everybody? Today, we're going to talk about the Three-Fifths Compromise um, of 1787. Uh, now, I first heard about this in um, uh, a rather unique way uh, when I was about you know, seven, eight years old. And I actually heard it from um, two guys that were just like kind of debating like on a street corner. And it was like they were going back and forth talking about racism and uh, civil rights, etc. And one of the guys was like, man, at one time you weren't even considered a full man. You were just three fifths of a man, you know, and um, that always stuck uh, with me for a long time because I was trying to figure that out. Like, man, what was the what was the reason? You know, so when you don't know, you kind of like just uh, fill in your own answers, so to speak, right? You fill in the blanks. So I always thought like, well, uh, white people thought we were just inferior and they just wanted to, you know, knock us down a rung. And so they said we were three-fifths of a man, so we want to be equal uh, to them. So that's why I thought, yeah, as a, you know, as a little kid, you know, I found, found out later, you know, by the time I was a teenager, like, I found out, you know, the story. But, um... This is what I want to talk about today. So we're going to talk about the Three-Fifths Compromise of 1787. So um, we're going to get in, you know, get into it and uh, kind of give like the the full uh, scope of it. And again, the, you know, American history, especially um, uh, when the, co you know, when the, uh, the rose colored stained glass, uh, the rose colored glasses are taken off and all the beauty and all of the pageantry is taken away like any other country the history is you know has some you know some dark side side of it so you know it's what it is um i think history is very important to try to learn from and move on uh in the future one thing i will say about history is uh uh there's a famous quote i don't know if it's attributed to caesar but you know, that might not even, not even be true because, you know, many quotes are attributed to famous people. Like, how do you know they actually said it? But one of the quotes is that history is written, written by the victors. And uh, I, I definitely agree with that. Another quote is by uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, who said, again, this is attributed to Napoleon, but who supposedly said history is a pack of lies agreed upon, if I remember correctly. Yeah, history is a pack of lies agreed upon. Um, I guess what it is, is like m the way I view history is basically you got to take everything with a grain of salt. You got to understand that, listen, when you're listening or reading United States history or English history, you're hearing it from, hearing it from the perspective of those who won on the battlefield, right? They're, getting, they're giving near side of what happened. Okay, because they they won, the enemy is dead, right, or vanquished, defeated. So you're not hearing the full side, full story, right? Like they say, there's always uh, three sides to every argument, right? They say there's your side, the other person's side, and, and the truth is somewhere in between. History is very much like that, except there might be 20 sides to, to you know, to an argument. It depends on all the, all the players, you know, but listen, if you're the only survivor or your side's the only victor, you could tell a story, you know, how you want it. So when you discuss like the legacy of slavery, for example, and, um, you know, you're, the, you're the, the winning side, you can make it sound, you know, as uh, glorious, you know, as you want. Because the people that lost are all dead, right, and buried. Right, you could say, "Hey, the reason why slavery stopped in the United States is because, uh, you know, people gained a conscience and, you know, they realized it was wrong and they, you know, just turned, you know, turned the country around and every and and now kumbaya and we all hold hands." Right? Isn't that a beautiful story? Right? Of course, that's 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 you know that's the narrative. Like, yeah, we just we figured it out as a country together. And hey, it sounds good, but remember. History is written by the victors, right? And so, sometimes you got to look a little deeper deeper than that, okay? So, especially when you're going hundreds and hundreds of years into history, thousands of years, you know? So, let's get into this three-fifths compromise. So, again, it's a compromise agreement between delegates from the northern 
and Southern states at the United States Constitutional Congress of, uh, excuse me, Convention of 1787. And basically, it was declaring that uh, three uh, fifths of the population, slave population, I'm sorry, would be counted for determining uh, taxation and representation in the House of Representatives. So, okay, so what was what was the deal? Why? All right, so again, take this with a with a grain of salt. Many of the founding fathers they acknowledged that slavery violated the idea of liberty because you got to remember, you know. Uh, all that stuff that we hold these truths truths to be self evident. All men are created equal, and all that stuff. And it's funny because it's like in um, that uh, joke that Dave Chappelle told in one of his stand up specials a long time ago. You know, he was like, uh, you know, Thomas Jefferson's penning the Constitution. We hold these truths to be self self evident. All men are creating created equal. And he's like, give me a sandwich, nigga, or I'll kill you. You know, it, it, he captures the spirit of the time. Where it was so much conflict, it was like on one hand, you know, they were talking about, you know, the liberty of all men and, you know, man's right to be free and, and you know, these inalienable rights, stuff like that. But then, the, at the same time, they have slaves, you know, there's all kind of slave codes and uh, we'll get into um, that stuff, you know, slavery in the colonies in another video, but there was so much... Like cacophony going on, so much uh, dissonance, it, it was crazy. Because the same guys that would, you know, they would put down slavery, you know, such as like Am Alexander Hamilton and such like that, the same guy would be uh, selling slaves, for for example. Again, well, I'll do another video sometime on um, Hamilton, because Hamilton actually is responsible, um, you know, a great a great deal responsible for, for abolishing slavery in New York State, actually, Right? But the thing about him is that he he actually um, at least either owned slaves or he helped sl sell slaves. So he was like he was part of the 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 connect basically. So if it was drugs, Hamilton might have been a connect for others to obtain and move slaves. But at the same time, this guy's writing in pamphlets, hey, you know, slavery is wrong, et cetera, et cetera. So there was a lot of that going on uh, back in the day. But anyway, so back to this uh this compromise so these founding fathers were saying hey you know it's wrong but at the same time after at, after the american revolution they were trying to their goal of uh, main priority was just to create a united states of america you know um you know at all costs so it was like okay we don't like slavery but we do want the entire country to to be united so they kind of put slavery on the back burner and it's easy for them to do that because it doesn't affect them, right? And they had, you know, these racist tendencies, stuff like that. So it's easy to kind of say, you know what? Eh. All right, we'll deal with slavery later. Let's create this union first, okay? And um, as a matter of fact, Thomas Jefferson's statement regarding the injustices of slavery was actually removed uh, from the Declaration of Independence, final version. Uh, many people don't know that, but again, like, then you say, well, what about Thomas Jefferson? He had slaves. It's, it, it's crazy. These dudes had slaves, but then they say it's wrong. You know, so maybe they had like a love-hate relationship with uh, uh, slavery. All right. So just moving on, um, you had some disagreements, right? The ba the basic problem with counting the slaves as representatives, right? So you had big states, right, with a lot of people. And you had you had small states. The big states, they wanted they wanted the plan to, um, they wanted to be represented based on um, uh, population, right, or wealth, right. So if you're a huge state, right, like say you you're New York State, for instance, or California, you had like millions of people, right, and you you know you want to be represented, your representation to be based on the population, because you have like so many people. Right. And the wealth is probably, you know, million, you know, you have, uh, you know, so much money. Right. But what if you're a small state like Rhode Island or something like that, you know, or uh, New Jersey. Right. You're not going to want the state. You're not going to want your representation based on population because then you will have you wouldn't have any power. You would hardly get any rep representation because it's so small. So this is why you had what is called the Virginia plan 
or large state plan, which uh, provided for like a, a, a two tier legislature and representation based on population of wealth. So that's what all the big states wanted, of course, right? New Jersey, a small state plan, they proposed equal representation for all the states. So basically, the the small state plan was or New Jersey plan as it was called. Uh, they the little guys were saying, "Hey, uh, it doesn't matter how big you are. We are all equal, right? We are all equal in this. Uh, doesn't matter, right? So, guess what? Neither and this this is like today's politics, right? Neither the the large states or the small states would would back down. So therefore, you had gridlock, right? Nobody wants to back down. So you finally had what was called the Connecticut or the Great Compromise. All right. So it was like a mixture of of both. Right. So you had this this two tier uh, legislation. Right. Which is what the larger states wanted. But then you also had proportional um, representation in the lower part of the house. Right. So the, that gives the, the larger states what they want. But then you had equal representation uh, with the states in the um, I'm sorry, you had equal representation of the states in the upper house. So proportion or based on you know population in the lower in the lower portion of the house but in the equal representation of the states in the upper part all right so now got that out the way how do you actually determine the the population it's when you have slave slaves involved so again going back to representation say you have uh, you know, state like say like New Jersey, right? There's not too many. Uh, you know, you had like a hundred people there, no slaves. But say you have a state like Georgia, you have a hundred people there, but you also have a hundred slaves. So the state without the slaves is saying, hey, we don't want slaves uh counted. Period. The state with the slaves is saying, yeah, we want more representation. So yeah, you gotta count these slaves. So that was a new d debate because remember the American Revolution did not secure the abolishment of slavery. Okay, so what you had is you had some delegates uh, from the northern states um, wanting to uh, have representation, right? Um, dependent on only the um, size of the free population. In other words, they were like, "Hey, can't count the slaves." The Southern delegates, on the other hand, they were like, you know what? If you don't count these slaves, we're going to abandon the convention. Remember, they're trying to, they, they, they want to keep the, they're trying to make a union and, you know, form a United States. So Southern is like, hey, we're going to um, pack up and be out of here if you don't count our slaves. Right? So, again, compromise time. Eventually, they agreed on the compromise. What was the name of the compromise? The three fifths compromise, so they said, "Hey, we're not gonna count all all the slaves. We're only gonna count three out of five of them," and that's how the agreement came to be known as the three fifths uh, compromise. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the lesson on the three fifths compromise, and we'll see you soon on the next video.